So um, Ingrid, um, Bruce is going to share uh, your slides. Um, we're not sure yet if we're going to manage the video, um, but we're going to do our best. Okay, Bruce is shaking his head. But um, it's so good to see you and Munman together. <laughs> Hi, uh, Juan and everyone. So good afternoon from Bangladesh. Please go ahead. The floor is yours. Okay. So as, uh, as Bruce Thanks. is sharing for us the screen, that's great. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks. No problem. And, go ahead. Yeah, we're, we're having some net issues here, but what's new in Bangladesh? <laughs> so Moon Moon and I will be sharing in terms of our experience on the women's participation project since 2018. And I think uh, a very good segue was uh, Ashrin's uh, mention on the case studies uh, that the mission also contributed. So uh, over to you, Moon. Yeah. So thank you so much and uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Flores Munmun Boyregi working with uh, Site Management Capacity Building Team as WPP Focus. So we'd uh, welcome all uh, today's presentation and we'll be uh, sharing uh, about the uh, reflection of the Omen participation in Rohingya refugee camps in Cox's Bazar, Bangladesh today. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, so we'll be sharing uh, one video. We'll try to show one video. One of our Omen committee leaders from uh, the mega camp in Cox's Bazar, Camp 20 Extension, has shared the experience uh, with uh, being with uh, WPP. So yeah, let's see. Yeah, I, I'm not sure the video is going to happen. Uh, no, it will, it will. I just need to change ah, it. Um, okay. Move to a different thing. Give me one second. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Sound is clear, but no video. Hi, Munmunapa. Okay, can you see it? Yes, there you go. Tara <laughs> আরে <laughs> And 
Yeah. Next slide, please, please. Yes. Yeah, uh, so as uh, we mentioned that uh, we have piloted our Oman participation project back in 2018, and it was piloted in Camp 24 called Leda in Tekna. But later it was expanded to, uh, sorry, I think. Uh, previous slide. Previous slide, please, <laughs> sorry. Yes, uh, thank you. So, uh, and then later it was expanded to Shamlapur in 2019 and then in Chipang in 2021. And uh, we have piloted this uh, one participation project in uh, Biomega Camp in 2020, which is, uh, we started with three camps, Camp 9, 18, 18 and 20 extension uh, in Kultupalung and Balukhali uh, extension. So our objective was to support the meaningful participation of women and girls in the camp's life, and especially in the governance and decision-making in their community. And the key intervention was like the best assessment and online assessment, uh, women community formation with, this, uh, with the community consultation and selection by the women in the community and the capacity development activities, women selected an women led project and emergency preparedness. Next slide, please. Uh, so we're implementing our women participation project uh, in 10 camps, uh, 10 iron camps, and we're expanding it to other eight camps, uh, which is managed by our implementing partners called uh, DRC and CARE. And more than 1,000 women are already involved directly in the women committee, and uh, they are involved in different site management activities like awareness raising session on COVID-19, fire response, cyclone and monsoon preparedness, and other activities as well. Uh, and community engagement, especially, or oh, they are uh, they are working with the, their own, with uh, other women in the sub block level with other uh, different activities uh, they are doing in the uh, especially to be part of the community engagement, and also they have more interest to participate more in the camp activities. Next slide, please. And um, uh, as you know, like uh, we have some challenges uh, to implement this women participation project, especially the camp leadership structure. This is uh, in our camp, uh, it mostly it's male dominated um, uh, leadership structure, which is we call Machi system. And there has no female representation in this, uh, in this uh, structure. And also not all the CICs are very much supportive to women participation projects. So, we have that one and also some dominating family members, especially elderly and male, and they are not, uh, sometimes they are not allowing women to be outside in, that, uh, in uh, to be part of different kinds of activities. Sometimes they are not uh, go, uh, allowed to go outside with uh, without the guardians and other uh, others uh, uh, in the camp activities. There are some religious and cultural practices, uh, which is uh, one of our challenges. Uh, because the female leadership is not accepted in, uh, and also they believe that women should uh, remain home. They should not leave the uh, home uh, if, unless it's necessary. And also they have to wear burqa when they are going outside. Also, there are some safety and security concerns uh, because women don't feel sometimes they don't feel safe outside of their blocks or their shelters. And also uh, there are there are some. Uh, they are fear of their fear of being uh, identified some groups, uh, especially when they are part of different kind of activities in uh, WPP and also sometimes they are being afraid of um, being harassed by other community members as well. And of course, uh, there are some uh, lack of education and lack of activities in the camps and also though they are very uh, keen to uh, learn some, so many things, but still the uh, excess of the um, learning, is, uh, learning and other opportunities are very less here. And also one of the challenges is COVID-19 due to the COVID-19 restrictions in Bangladesh, we cannot really um, do much uh, uh, as we plan to do so. Next slide, please. Despite all these uh, challenges, we have so many good practices. We're doing our women committee uh, in our uh, with our women committee members in WPP. So we had women committee formations, and uh, we introduced them uh, them in different camp stakeholders like CICs and other service providers. And we had multi year capacity build development activities for the women committee, which is women participation and leadership training, which was adapted from even women and protection training packages and self care and psychosocial support training and CCCM and emergency preparedness and response training. 
uh, we had omen led projects and uh, different kind of in, uh, income generating activities like handicrafts, embroidery, swing, uh, vegetable and flower gardening, recycling, and uh, different kind of activities that was selected and uh, done by and led by the omen. And omens, as I already mentioned, that they are very keen and interested to have uh, the basic literacy. Awareness uh, raising activities for community members, uh, we are doing with men and women, uh, men and boys especially. And also they are involved uh, in different activities in the camp management activities, like they promote safety and security. And also they're uh, being part of, they're being part of the cash for work activities. Also, they are uh, taking part of the block level emergency preparedness and response. Uh, also, we have strong partnership with IOM protection team across different phases of the project and especially on the capacity development and consultations. So yeah, over to you, Ingrid. Thanks, Moon. So I'll just continue with the lessons learned. Just to uh, note, Ingrid, that you've got five minutes to go. Thanks, Moon, and then you can cut me. <laughs> so from, from those uh, activities mentioned by Moon Moon and also the journey of the women's participation here in Bangladesh, which started in one camp, in the South Camp in Technaf with both the host community and the refugee population, we have expanded. And as Moon Moon mentioned, we are trying also to extend it to our implementing partners. So it, all in all, our aspiration is to have it in the 18 camps uh, in the IOM AOR. Big aspiration, but we continue with these lessons learned. So overall, women's committee in Fox's Bazaar have proven to be able to create a comfortable place uh, for women to learn, engage, and have a say when Rohingya cultural and social norms would normally suppress this. So even back in, in Rakhine, where they say that they were not used to having this venue and this uh, opportunity. And then it strengthened also their contribution to camp management overall. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of coordination uh, mechanism, uh, most of the colleagues and, and Bruce was part of this advocacy and we are still advocating for a formal representation system, but having the women's committee and uh, several camps where CICs are supportive or open to the idea of having women's participation uh, in place through a women committee group, uh, we are able to present this to the stakeholders, especially with the camp in charge, and we are gaining traction in terms terms of having the women's uh, participation. And it is the women committee themselves who also express that they want to be introduced to the camp stakeholders, uh, especially to the community leaders, so they will have more confidence in their engagement. Next slide, please. So what it has taken to reach this point in terms of time and resources. So as you've seen, uh, we started from a seed uh, funding from 2018 and it grew also and it gained also momentum with donor interest over time. So in, in TechNAF, because of the good practices, uh, so several donors were interested and it allowed us to continue uh, the women's participation project uh, across uh, the faces. So in 2018 to 2021, we have seen that uh, it's very important that WPP is incorporated in IOM site management programming and operations and to have dedicated staff, although this is not their only task, but it, part of it is the oversight and support to the camp uh, women participation project focal. So in each camp, we have a WPP focal who are also in, uh, engaged in other tasks, but they are also the, the key people moving the WPP. And then we also learned that it takes an enormous amount of staff resources, both from site management and protection, because we are really trying to incorporate protection mainstreaming. Uh, so while meeting a project timeline. So as we know, there are some donors which has a very limited timeline. And uh, in terms of deadline, we, we need to uh, push for this while at the same time sustaining that the women's engagement does not stop with the project end dates. And then uh, from, from the experience, it seems the model in LEDA Camp 24 seems to be uh, the very good practice because uh, over time, it has allowed uh, the women committee to really uh, take roots in the camp in their roles. 
and uh, there are challenges while starting this also in one camp uh, with the uh, imminent uh, closure of this camp. So it has impacted also the women's participation. But IOM, site management and protection, we are still there supporting the remaining uh, women committee while the rest have been transferred to the islands or relocated to other camps. And then uh, finally, this is also one of our lessons learned here, both from protection and site management that rolling WPP in multiple camps simultaneously, uh, as we mentioned, pulled our staff resources and in order to also like also meet the deadline. So we need to balance that one. So therefore, uh, projectization in, is an unhelpful reality uh, in implementing the WPP because in the reality, we have also projects and, and timelines. But uh, we mentioned that it takes time for the seed to grow. And it, what is good is that uh, operationally and at program level, WPP is incorporated. So we managed to have also support while that there is like gap in terms of funding. We have the regular operations and capacity development, uh, which uh, can create and sustain the program. I think I have my last minute. So Bruce, next slide. This will be the last slide. So finally, uh, it, we have also seen the growing interest among the women in terms of uh, engagement with other clusters or sectors. And the other sectors have also uh, engaged the women uh, in terms of uh, the reports, referrals, and in terms of their service assistance and, and protection uh, cases and all that one. So we have seen that it has gained momentum from site management and the interest among the sectors also to touch base uh, really meaningfully with the women committees is an opportunity for them uh, to improve our assistance and support uh, to the community uh, through the women committees. So uh, thank you so much from, from Bangladesh. Thank you Ingrid so, and Moon Moon. Thank you so much for the presentations. If you have questions for Ingrid and Munmun, please do drop them in the chat because I hope they're going to stay with us for a little bit longer to answer any questions you might have.